It is 94 days till the man burns and today we're talking about face painting and face painting safety. Because if you wanna do face painting at Burning Man, especially if you want to gift it to other people, you wanna make sure that they're gonna enjoy it and not end up suffering because, you know, you put something on their face that you maybe shouldn't have. So your paints are the first thing that you really need to worry about. You definitely want to avoid anything that is not designed to be on the face. Acrylic paint, Sharpies, markers, anything like that, it, they're not designed to be on your skin. They're not designed to, you know, be used as face paints. So avoid using them. They can cause allergic reactions, especially acrylic paints. If you Google for images of like allergic reactions to acrylic paints or face paints, you'll see some pretty nasty reactions. So you want to be really careful about what you are putting on other people's faces. Make sure that whatever face paints you get, you read the safety sheets that come with them because there are certain colors that shouldn't be used on certain areas. The most common is not putting blue or green on the lips and not putting red around the eyes. I'm not entirely sure why, but you know, obviously those safety sheets are there for a reason and if it says you shouldn't do it, you probably shouldn't do it. If you are planning to gift face painting, make sure you kind of warn people that there is a potential that they could have a bad reaction to it because at least that way, you know, they're informed. There is a small possibility you will have some kind of allergic reaction to this. And then, you know, you don't have to feel so responsible if something does go wrong because they were aware and they agreed to it. You know, in an ideal world, you would be able to do patch tests on people, but at Burning Man, you're probably not gonna be patch testing people. I mean, you could do a small patch test, just, you know, pop some on their arm, just like on the inner elbow and just see if they have a reaction within kind of 10, 15 minutes. But that's not exactly a thorough patch test. They could still experience a bad reaction to it that just kind of shows up later on. But at least that way, if someone is severely allergic to that type of paint, you're gonna know before you smother them in it. UV and neon paints are not FDA approved. They have not been approved for use, you know, on your skin, near your eyes, anything like that. So many people still use them, I still use them, but most of them will come with a warning on them that says like, tested for safety, but does not meet international cosmetic regulations. So it's kind of an at your own risk situation. But I would avoid using them really close to the eyes or the lips. You kind of want to go for areas where it's not close to anything that could cause problems. With whatever you're using to apply the face paints with, you know, brushes or sponges, what, whatever you choose to use, there is a potential for allergic reactions if you are using sponges that contain latex. You can get sponges that are latex free and they are not that much more expensive. I, they're around the same price. They're just not as popular, so they're a bit harder to get hold of. But it's another thing you'll want to ask people and let them know, you know, are you allergic to latex? Because I'm gonna rub this sponge that is latex all over your face and I don't wanna do that if you have an allergy. There is also a risk of contamination. Anyone that's a makeup artist or body painter, anyone that's kind of learnt the health and safety that goes with it, you will already be very aware of contamination risks and double dipping. Double dipping is basically where you use a brush on someone or a sponge and then you put it back in whatever product you're using and then you put it back on their face. So now your product is contaminated because you rubbed it on their face and rubbed it back in the product. So when you go to face paint the next person, even if you use clean applicators, you're putting them in something that's contaminated. Double dipping is frowned upon in the industry, but you are not in the industry, you're doing face painting at Burning Man and it would be quite complicated to have a setup where there was no risk of contamination. You know, when you do makeup or body painting or something, you never even use the same brushes or sponges on a second person. Like each person gets their own stuff. You're probably not gonna be bringing that many brushes. And by the way, I would avoid bringing your nice brushes, like your nice makeup brushes. I would just go for cheap paint brushes. So if you are gonna be double dipping, things like that, then you want to try and lower the contamination risk. Don't paint anyone that looks like they're sick, that has broken skin or some kind of contagious skin condition. You know, if they have like a cold sore or something, you don't really wanna be painting them and then using those brushes on other people. 
Also, if you're using water activated paints, make sure you leave them to dry out completely before you close them up, which obviously it's a bit of a pain at Burning Man because of all that dust flying around. But most face paints contain kind of germ fighting stuff. And if you leave them wet, then you're just giving it an environment for germs to grow in. So you want it to dry out so that germ fighting stuff can work. Barrier sprays can be great if you are going to be face painting on people that have very sensitive skin because it creates a barrier between their skin and the paint. So some people don't have like full on, you know, allergic reactions that are going to be terrible, but some paints can just make people break out. They can make the skin just a bit sensitive. I've used paints that have left my face very, very red and warm and just a bit uncomfortable. And when you use a barrier spray, you're just lowering the risk of that happening. But you know, it's by no means like a requirement if people want you to paint their faces and you've warned them, you don't need to bring a barrier spray. It's just something that can be nice to have. If you're gonna bring a mirror, make sure it's one of the plasticky ones because chances are people are gonna to want to see what you've done and so you'll want some kind of mirror. But obviously if you bring, you know, a, a glass type mirror, the chances of it getting broken are much higher and that's gonna create move and it's kind of dangerous because it's like shards of glass. It's just a bit complicated to clean up. If you have a plasticky mirror that a lot of face painters use when they face paint children, it's not gonna get smashed. So you're not gonna have to worry about it. Be quite selective about which paints you use as well. Some paints are very flaky when they dry and that's just moop. If you have someone wandering around covered in face paint that's just flaking it off everywhere, that's obviously a big problem. So make sure you test your face paints out first to make sure they're not gonna flake off or anything like that. I would suggest getting palettes before investing in larger cakes if you're planning on getting the larger ones because that way you're not gonna spend a load of money only to find that your face paint is just flaking off everywhere and it's not gonna be suitable for Burning Man. If you're planning on using metallic type paints, Make sure you don't get ones with glitter in them because when those paints dry, the glitter does kind of fall off. And again, that's moop. You don't want to be responsible for that either. And you know, you can get metallic paints that don't contain chunks of glitter in them. If you do want to be able to clean your brushes and your sponges a bit and just kind of sanitize them, bring along a small bottle of isopropyl alcohol. I think 70% is fine. This one's like 99.9. .9 rubbing alcohol and this is just a good way to get germs and things off of your brushes and sponges if you know you're going to be painting a lot over the course of Burning Man it can just be nice to do this kind of you know at the end of a face painting session but if you're bringing that along be careful because it, you know it's highly flammable it's bad if you get it in your eyes or you drink it or something so make sure you keep it in the container that it came in so it's very obvious this is not something you should drink or do anything else with except clean your brushes with. Even though staining isn't really a kind of safety thing, be aware that some face paints do stain. I find that blues and greens, they are quite bad for staining skin. Barrier spray can help with that, but it might just be something that you want to give anyone that you're painting a quick heads up about like, hey, these ones sometimes stain your skin. So you might not be able to like completely get it off. And then, you know, if they have a problem with that, you can choose some colors that aren't as likely to stain them. Sun cream is a bit of an issue, especially if you use like water activated paints, which are the easiest to use really and the easiest to remove because many people are gonna want to take it off at the end of the day. And face paint is not a sun cream. It's not gonna protect you from the sun. Some people have said they've you know, used face paints and then they've had those kind of patches whited out so the sun hasn't been able to penetrate it. But I wouldn't rely on that. People will want to apply sun cream before you paint them so they have some initial protection. And it can be a little bit difficult to top up your sun cream once you're covered in paint because, you know, it's gonna reactivate the paint, it could end up smudging it all around. So one solution is to have like the sun cream spray so that you can just spray it and you don't really need to rub it in. 
but technically that sun cream would be sitting on top of the paint rather than absorbing into your skin, which is what you want to happen to get that protection. It's kind of a tricky one. I don't really have a good answer for how to keep your sun cream nice and topped up and be face or body painted at the same time. Maybe just try and keep anything too big and elaborate for, you know, the evening or something and just do smaller designs in the day so that you can still apply sun cream. The main safety thing really is just making sure that people are aware that they could have an allergic reaction to the paint, making sure that you are getting paint that is suitable to be used on the skin and try and go for the ones that are kinder on the skin. There is kind of a divide in the body paint world where half of them are designed more for like theater and performance and full on body painting and others are designed for, you know, children and party face painting. So the ones that are designed for party face painting, they tend to be a bit kinder to skin than other ones. You also want to make sure that the paint is very easy to remove because many people aren't gonna be having showers, they're just gonna be trying to get that off with baby wipes or makeup wipes or something. So things like oil-based paints, alcohol activated paints, grease paints, things like that, they are harder to remove than water activated paints or cream paints. So that's another thing you'll want to kind of think about when you are getting face paints. So I hope this was helpful guys. If any of the rest of you have any tips or suggestions about, you know, face painting and body painting, and how to make sure it doesn't all end in disaster, let us know in the comment section below. And if you see me at Burning Man this year, feel free to come and say hi to me. Bye guys.